All right, welcome back to the channel. So, Jermel Charlo, one of the top fighters in the world, and definitely the top fighter at 154 pounds, uh, responds to Danny Garcia saying he's moving up in weight when he was pressed uh, in an interview about whether or not he would fight him, and his answer was absolutely hilarious. And, you know, short story is he doesn't think too highly of it, but what's surprising is how low he ranks Danny Garcia in the 154 pound division. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So before we get into the subject matter of the video, I wanna say thank you to everybody that supports the live streams and the super chats and the live streams that allow us to promote the fighters that we promote over on the Instagram page. In this video, you'll see up here somewhere uh, or down here an invite to the Instagram channel. Uh, please uh, follow me on Instagram and follow me on Twitter. So Jermel Charlo, the 154 pound champion. Uh, I believe he is a top five pound for pound fighter in the world. And uh, I don't really think that there's much of an argument that he's not. He has dominated. He has dominated his weight class uh, like nobody else in uh, boxing is dominating their weight classes. And that goes from the heavyweight division to the middleweight division to the welter to the welterweight division and the lightweight division. We have a lot of champions that we say are, you know, the best guys in the division, the number one guys in the division. And as a result of being that, they wind up getting placed on pound for pound lists by Ring Magazine, pound for pound lists by uh by ESPN, right? In the case of Tiafimo Lopez, that was the case when you had a unified champion in the case of uh um, Usyk, Alexander Usyk, that was the case. Terrence Crawford gets three belts. He was on there. Errol Spence Jr. has two belts. He's on there. And you have Jermel Charlo, who, for some strange reason, despite his accomplishments in a stacked division, is completely overlooked, right, um, in that discussion. So uh, for me, when I hear that Danny, Danny, uh, Danny, excuse me, Danny Garcia was moving up in weight, I was like, okay, well, that's going to be a big money fight for Jermel Charlo. There's no doubt who the guy, who the man is in that division. He holds three of the major belts. The only other one out there is uh, with Brian Castano. So thoughts immediately go to a fight between Danny Garcia and Jermel Charlo. Now, Jermel, even though Danny Garcia has not um, done anything in the 154 pound division, you know, we're all fan, you know, fans of the sport of boxing and know how the sport of boxing goes. When you have built your name up and you have a fan base, you're going to be the guy that is able to get uh, to be able to get the fights. Right. It's just how it goes. The reason why Errol Spence Jr. His name is growing so much in the sport of boxing is because he has a hometown, a home center. Uh, in uh, Dallas, Texas, here in the state of Texas, that allows him you know, allows him to do so. Well, in the case of Danny Garcia, that's been the case for a very long time, from the time that he was fighting guys like Eric Morales and Zab Judah in New York, all the way up until what he's doing in the 147 pound division, which may not be you know winning all the fights, but hey, he's in big money fights, big fights that big bring crap, big that bring big crowds because of you know the fact that he's from a major boxing uh center which is philadelphia and because he brings in also brings in a puerto rican uh, fan base right the combination of those two things make danny garcia always somebody that is going to bring in a crowd so he says that he's going to move up to 154 pounds and that he is going to be the biggest name in the division so we now have you know a situation where you have the best clearly the best fighter in the division and a guy that is only one fight away from being the undisputed champion and somebody that is the biggest money earner in the division and that i mean without a doubt is danny Gar is danny garcia um but you know when he's asked about it now you know first of all that he's going to take the fight i don't think that you're going to hear anybody you know talking about jermel charlo ducking uh danny garcia so you know, when I talk about, you know, what he thinks about Danny Garcia, and I don't think that that means that he is being dismissive of actually, you know, dismissive of actually making the fight. So when he's asked about Danny Garcia, he's like, come on, man, Danny Garcia isn't as good as 
a whole bunch of people in the 154 pound division. So why would, you know, why would he be considered the best guy or, you know, the guy, I guess the guy that he, you know, that he would be fighting. And he mentioned, and, you know, I'm going to tell you, man, I don't know if he's right, man, the, with the people that he mentioned. He mentioned Jason Rosario and he mentioned um, Erickson Lubin. I think that those would be very, very good fights. I'm not, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure, man, that Erickson Lubin is going to beat Danny Garcia. I would favor Erickson Lubin to beat D Danny Garcia, but I think that that would be a very, very good fight, man, because you know Danny Garcia is not somebody to be taken lightly, and it's not like he's somebody that's just going to get is just going to get mowed down. However, I do agree that a guy like Erickson Lubin, with the you know with his skill set, his southpaw skill set, his excellent boxing, uh, his excellent boxing ability. You know, would have the ability to beat him. You know, I, I would say you know sixty forty in favor of Erickson Lubin. And then when he talked about Jason Rosario, I don't know, man. I don't know if Jason Rosario, the guy that Jermel just beat to get his hands on the W. I think he was the dub, the IBF and the WBA one hundred and fifty four pound champion at the time that they fought. Jason Rosario, he won the belt off of. Um, Julian J. Rock Williams, who got the belt off Jared Hurd, right? You remember there was that whole just, um, what do you call it? Just a merry-go-round, or what do you call it when everybody, duck, duck, goose. <laughs> People were playing duck, duck, goose with that belt, with those two belts. And now it's with um, with Jermel Charlo. So, you know, I don't know if I would rank him that low because Danny Garcia has more experience and has fought tougher and better competition pretty much than anybody in the 154 pound division that's not named that's not named um Jermel Charlo. I think Jermel Charlo's level of competition is massively, massively underrated, man, because having beaten um guy who'd he beat? He bought, beat Austin Trout, he beat Erickson Lubin, he beat um Tony Harrison. I think he beat Ter Tony Harrison twice, but you know it is what it is. Tony Harrison got the decision. And Tony Harrison is somebody that is a very slick, difficult fighter. Somebody also that I think would beat would be Danny Garcia. That's somebody that Jermel Charlo didn't name, but somebody that I think would be, you know, an obvious choice for who it is, you know, that would beat him. But, um, you know, all in all, this fight is something that more than likely should happen. Um, Danny Garcia at this stage in his career is not going to just mess around and be fighting a bunch of guys in non-title fights. I don't, I don't see that happening for him. What I see for happening for him is he's either going to do one or two things. He's either going to get the shot at Brian Castano, which is a winnable fight for uh, Danny Garcia for sure. I think those styles match up. The styles match up very well with Brian Castano and uh, and Danny Garcia. Brian, da Brian Castano, as I've said before in other videos, is a fighter that will be right there and is going to, and likes to counterpunch. Danny Garcia is a master counterpuncher, and he mass and when he commits, he commits, and he you know can really cause some serious problems, man. I would say that I would favor Danny Garcia to beat Brian Castano, and then you'll more than likely see after that a fight for unification with Jermel Charlo, and then in that fight, you know I don't think that there's much doubt as to the outcome of that fight. It's going to be Jermel Charlo. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. I don't think that it's a fight that should be dis, dis, just disregarded. Um, and I think that it is a fight that monetarily is really going to work well for both parties. Danny Garcia specifically because it's probably going to be a two-fight path to that fight. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know in the comment section what you think about it. Comment, please watch the live, go to the live streams that we do every morning at 8 a.m. And with that, I'm out. Peace.